In the last video, you saw how very deep neural networks can have the problems of vanishing and exploding gradients. It turns out that a partial solution to this doesn't solve it entirely, but helps a lot, is better or more careful choice of the random initialization for your neural network. To understand this, let's start with the example of initializing the weights for a single neuron, and then we'll go on to generalize this to a deep network. Let's go through this with an example um, with just a single neuron, and then we'll talk about a deep net later. So with a single neuron, you might input four features, um, x1 through x4, and then you have some a equals g of z, and then it outputs some y. And uh, later on for a deeper net, you know, these inputs will be right, some layer a of l. Uh, but for now, let's just call this x for now. So z is going to be equal to w1x1 plus w2x2 plus dot 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 plus, I guess, wnxn. And, and let's set b equals 0. So, you know, let's just ignore b for now. So in order to make z not blow up and not become too small, um, you notice that the larger n is, the smaller you want wi to be, right? Because z is a sum of wi xi. And so if you're adding up a lot of these terms, you want each of these terms to be smaller. One reasonable thing to do would be to set the variance of um, wi to be equal to 1 over n, where n is the number of input features that's going into a neuron. So in practice, what you can do is set the weight matrix W for a certain layer to be NP dot random dot rand N, you know, and then whatever the shape of the matrix is, you fill this out here, um, and then times square root of 1 over the number of features that are fed into each neuron in layer L. So it's going to be n of L minus 1, because that's the number of units that are feeding in um, to each of the units in layer L. It turns out that if you're using a um, ReLU activation function, then rather than 1 over n, it turns out that setting the variance to 2 over n works a little bit better. So you often see that in initialization, especially if you're using a ReLU activation function. So if GL of Z is a ReLU of Z. Oh, and depending on how familiar you are with random variables, it turns out that sampling a Gaussian random variable and then multiplying it by square root of this, that sets the variance to, to be equal to this thing, to be 2 over n. Okay, and the reason I went from n to this n superscript L minus 1 was um, in this example with logistic regression, which is that n input features, but in the more general case, layer L would have n L minus 1 um, inputs to each of the units in that layer. So if the input features or input activations are roughly mean 0 and uh, standard variance and variance 1, then this will cause z to also be take on a similar scale. And this doesn't solve, but it definitely helps reduce the um, vanishing and exploding gradients problem because it's trying to set each of the weight matrices w you know, so that it's not too much bigger than 1 and not too much less than 1, so it doesn't explode or vanish too quickly. I'll just mention some other variants. The version we just described is assuming a ReLU activation function, and it's by a paper by He et al. A few other variants, um, if you are using a TANH activation function, then there's a paper that shows that instead of using the constant 2, it's better to use the constant 1. And so 1 over this instead of 2, and so you multiply by the um, square root of this. So this square root term would replace this term, and, and you'd use this if uh, you're using a TANH activation function. This is called a Xavier initialization. And another version worked out by um, Yosha Benjo and his colleagues, you might see in some papers, but uh, is to use this formula, which you know has some other theoretical justification. Um, but I would say if you're using a ReLU activation function, which is really the most common activation function, I would use this formula. Um, if you're using TANH, you could try this version instead, um, and some authors will also use this. 
But in practice, I think all of these formulas just give you a starting point. It gives you a default value to use for the variance of the initialization of your weight matrices. If you wish, the variance here, this variance parameter could be another thing that you could tune with your hyperparameters. So you could have another parameter that multiplies into this formula and tune that multiplier as part of your hyperparameter search. Sometimes the tuning that hyperparameter has a modest size effect. It's not one of the first hyperparameters I would usually try to tune, but I've also seen some problems where tuning this you know, helps, helps a reasonable amount. But this is usually lower down for me in terms of um, how important it is relative to the other hyperparameters you could tune. So I hope that gives you some intuition about the problem of vanishing or exploding gradients, as well as how choosing a reasonable scaling for how you initialize the weights. Hopefully that makes your weights you know, not explode too quickly and not decay to zero too quickly. So you can train a reasonably deep network without the weights uh, or the gradients exploding or vanishing too much. When you train deep networks, this is another trick that will help you um, make your neural networks train much more quickly.